I'm here at Vita Foods Europe 2018 and I'm joined by Stephanie Pretasek who is the Global Category Manager for Consumer Health at Diana Foods. Stephanie, thank you very much for joining me. You're very welcome, Alex. Do you want to just explain to us what you're exhibiting here at Vita Foods sure, today? Sure, sure. What we are exhibiting here at Vita Food is everything that represents the trust that Diana Food can bring to its customers. Okay, so it all starts with the selection of the raw materials, still something very strong at Diana. And it's really part of the, once again, the trust that our customers will be able to get when they use our ingredients. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we're bringing is the trust that our products will deliver in our customers' applications. And for example, we are demonstrating our products in food-like types of formats as we see dietary supplements moving more and more into that direction. So you have here, for example, gummies that contain our acerola and also, you know, some chocolate that will deliver the right amount of antioxidants thanks to the addition of acerola powder. So that's the second aspect of the trust we can bring. And the third one, which is something that is extremely important for Diana, is the credibility of the science that we build on our ingredients. Okay, so we have a, a, a description of the different partnerships that we have with different universities and uh, industrial partners that demonstrate how efficient we can be in using science to deliver new health benefits and benefits that consumers will be able to trust because we understand the mechanisms of action. We have here two products as examples to your customers how they can use your acerola products. Yes. Could you give us a couple more examples of how they might be used? Yes, of course. Well, uh, you know, our products are primarily designed to be used in traditional formats of dietary supplements. So anything that will go from capsules to tablets, but also more innovative formats like soft gels. We have specific grades uh, that can be used in, uh, in soft gels. But what we see more and more is that our customers are looking for products that can be used in food-like types of applications. So that's why we are showing gummies, we are showing chocolate, uh, but our products can also be used in beverages, they can be used in confectionery products, they can be used in uh, snacks and cereals. We have once again a good uh, amount of different products that can be used in these applications and good knowledge of how the product will perform in the processes at our customers. Absolutely, consumers are looking for products that help them support their overall health. So how right. important do you think it is for consumers that you offer them accessible formats like confectionery in order to get them to buy into this category? I think it's very important. It's very important for many reasons. First of all, uh, there is a, um, a point about affordability and usually these products are at a price where customers and consumers will be able to afford them on a more regular basis. Uh, there's also uh, an aspect about accessibility. Uh, it's true that when you find products in the supermarkets, it's easier to buy them than if you have to go to a pharmacy or a specific shop, you know, where you can usually buy the dietary supplements. So it's, it's also very important. The, the last point that's very important about this, uh, these new formats is that they are very easy uh, for people to take as part of their normal lifestyle. And if we take the example, for example, of um, uh, pediatric dietary supplements, well, it's going to be easier to give a dietary supplement to a child under the format of a gummy than, you know, a tablet or a capsule that the child will not like. And obviously you have to deliver um, a certain level of food ingredient in order sure. to for it to offer maximum efficacy. Yes. How easy is it to incorporate those requisite amounts of ingredient into products such as confection? Yes. Well, it's actually uh, something that we pay a lot of attention to at Diana because working with natural products, you know, we have to consider the amount that is naturally present in the fruit or the vegetable that we are processing. So it's something that we really discuss with our customers. For some products, it's going to be very easy because the, the natural product is sufficiently concentrated to be used in the different formats. In some cases, we will have to discuss you know, what will be the best format that will be able to uh, absorb you know, the right amount of the fruit powder or the vegetable powder that's needed to bring the right amount of the active component. Indeed, and looking ahead, I'm sure you have high hopes for Vita Foods, but what lies further down the road for Diana? What lies further down for Diana is something very important uh, that uh, we were announcing earlier on. Uh, we are uh, announcing the creation of an industrial research chair 
uh, which is a five-year research program where we will study the interaction between polyphenols and the human microbiota. Uh, polyphenols are a very important family of active components uh, with plenty of health benefits, but it's very interesting to note that only 5% of the polyphenols we absorb are actually metabolized by the body. So there is something happening inside our digestive tract that will potentialize the polyphenols and enable them to deliver these benefits. And we know this is thanks to the catabolism by the microbiota that polyphenols will deliver their health benefits. So this research chair is really going to be investigating these mechanisms of action, but also it will look at combining polyphenol with probiotics to deliver new benefits and optimized benefits for polyphenols and probiotics. So potentially a very exciting time for Diana's portfolio. Extremely portfolio. exciting. Excellent extremely exciting. Stephanie, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much.